Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. Got my brother Luke Simons, like diamonds, on here as well. We're talking about underwater smell tracks. Now, if you don't know what an underwater smell track is, you aren't alone. This will probably be one of the most powerful and probably one of the most unique and cool podcasts we've ever done, and, and honestly, the most helpful to help you catch more fish. And, and I've asked the same question to many people, Luke, including many of the guests on this show, some of the better fishermen in the country that we know, and only one person so far has immediately said, yes, I know what an underwater smell track is. Do you know who that was? Mark Sosin. Mark Sosin. You knew because I already told you offline, you cheater. <laughs> but yeah, Mark Sosin, you don't know who Mark Sosin is. He's one of the only guys in the world to be inducted into the IGFA Hall of Fame and the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. I mean, the dude is, is basically won more awards than most anyone else living right now, which is awesome. And he's one of the few guys who knew exactly what that was. Hint, hint, it's helped him catch a lot of fish. So in a sentence, an underwater smell track, there are, there are negative smell tracks, there are neutral smell tracks, and there are positive smell tracks. The negative ones detract fish. In, in all, and we're going to talk about real science based on this book, The Scientific Angler. And these negative smell tracks actually detract fish. They will not bite your lure, or at least it hurts your chances of them biting your lure bait if they smell the scent anywhere on your leader. It could be on your braid line, your main line. It could be on the lure, the hook, terminal tackle. Really, really fascinating. Then there's some neutral smell tracks. And then there's positive ones that actually attract bites. And some of them are going to uh, probably surprise you. I know I was surprised on this. I read this quite some time ago. I read this book again, and I'm talking about The Scientific Angler by Paul Johnson. And I showed it to Luke, and he was like, man, like we need to do a podcast on this. And now you just recently read it. And um, tell, tell me your, because you read it like just this past week, tell me your quick thoughts and we'll, we'll actually go into what all the different smell tracks are. We're actually going to list them out here uh, on this podcast. Yeah, well, just to, just to put it in perspective, first of all, just to explain what smell tracks are, it's basically scent, right? It's scent. If you didn't put that together yet, it is scent in the water and, and how, um, how easily fish can percept the scent and, and then how they react to it. And, and so just to put it in an overall perspective, this is when it really like hit me. It's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So we all know that dogs, you know, dogs can smell much better than us. It's like, I think it was like, uh, they can, there's like a, a thousand times plus, uh, you know, better than humans. And what amazed me is that the fact that that water, you know, um, the, the scent will, will stay intact more like an air scent kind of goes all over the place. And so the fact that fish are in the water and the fact that that water will hold scent together, fish smell, it was like a thousand times better than dogs do. So, so fish can actually get scent way better than dogs can, and which is way, way better than we can. So the numbers are in here. I don't remember the exact details, but it, was, it wasn't even close. And so for that reason, scent is really, really important. And whether you believe that uh, fish scents that will actually generate strikes, that's one thing. Um, that's that's debatable but what is 100 percent proven that this book really illustrates is is the uh, the importance of negative sense yes. of of getting away from bad sense that will totally detract fish there's some really awesome studies in here that are with 100 percent certainty that fish will 100 percent react to sense in a negative way yeah, let's let's so talk about us. let's talk about two of those stories before we go into the uh, kind of the chart on what's the negative, neutral, and positive. So one story that that hit me right away because we've probably all been there. And and so if you guys don't know about Paul Johnson, he was one of the first guys who was a very avid angler, and he would go underwater. He was a big time scuba diver and spent I mean twenty years down underneath the water watching these fish, studying these fish. And there was this boat that he was studying why they were, uh, I believe it was bass fishing. And they're on this same little small boat. They're both fishing the exact same lure, same line. Everything is completely identical. And he's underwater watching all of this. And after, you know, and 30 minutes, however long he was under, 
the one guy had caught all the fish. The other guy had not caught a single fish. And he's watching both of the lures, I mean, within five feet of each other. And this one lure keeps getting attacked over and over again. The other lure does not get a single bite, okay? When he goes up, guess what the only difference is between these two guys? The guy who was catching none of the fish, he was the one who had his hand on the engine. He was the one that had been pumping gas in the bulb, and he was a smoker. So hint, hint, those are two things, gasoline, petroleum, and nicotine from a cigarette that actually are negative. And that was the only thing. So as after he's been touching the, the gas pump, and after he's been smoking cigarettes, now he's tying his knots. Now he's actually messing with that lure and all of those negative smell tracks, those scents, thank you, Luke, are now on and associated with his both his, his mono line, his leader, and actually his lure. And that guy didn't catch a single fish. And he did this study over and over again. And the other one, if you want to talk about that one, if you remember the salmon um, study, which I thought was fascinating, where they took that uh, basically a, a left and a right, they can kind of split off and they could choose. Yeah. So what they did is they, they had, uh, obviously when, you know, salmon, they go up rivers. And so they, they built this contraption so that when the salmon are going up the river, they have to go through this funnel and they have a little, uh, a Y. So there's two, two little entryways. A, a, with fork, a, a fork in the road, if you will. A fork in the road. <laughs> and so, and so they can control the scents, right? They, they had a spot where they could, they could add scent to one side and not the other and then switch it and then see how the fish react. And, and so they put, uh, obviously we know salmon are very afraid of, of bears. And so they put a bear claw in, in one and immediately all the fish would go to the other side. And, and so first of all, when, when they didn't have a scent in either one, it was about 50-50. So it wasn't like the salmon were, uh, you know, right turners or left turners. They weren't uh, the ambi turners from, <laughs> from yeah. Zoolander. Zoolander. But, I'm not yeah, an that, ambi turner. Yeah. They That's weren't ambi turners. Right, There's lots of people who can't turn left. <laughs> so they, they, you know, without, uh, without the scent uh, disbursement, it was about 50-50. Then they put the bear claw on one side and they would all go away from that side into the unscented side. And then obviously they put the bear claw on the other one and they would immediately stop over as well. And, and so another thing they did, they put, you know, a human hand, right? Human scent and same thing. The, the fish went away from the, the human hand. And, and it wasn't, um, it turns out that just like the human scent, well, I can't remember the, it was some sort of, you might even have it, Joe, but it was some. L-serene, like kind of like, looks like glycerine. Yeah, so the, the natural human scent is a, a detractor. Um, and so that's something that we really need to be mindful of when we're tying up rigs is just to, um, to have some sort of way. Basically, if you just keep your hands super clean, that, that's good, right? It, it, it wipes away the stuff, but you can't do that, right? If we're on the water, you don't have soap, you don't have hot water to, to constantly wash your hands. So we just need to be mindful of that and use some sort of scent that can at least neutralize our scent. Yep, and they said that was one of the, the worst ones in this study um, was just putting the human scent. It's uh, that L-S-E-R-I-N-E. -E. It looks like glycerine uh, and that's human skin oil. And just by putting little drops of that oil in there in, in front of any of these fish, they would automatically, something in their biology has, has set them in their head that even their small little brain, that that is a warning to get away, just like a salmon and a, and a bear. Let me, I love the analogy he gives, you, you touched on it, Luke, that it does say that fish are 1,000 times better uh, in terms of scent than those of dogs. And he says, we are talking about parts per trillion, the equivalent of roughly one drop of vermouth being detected in 500,000 barrels of gin. Imagine that, one drop of vermouth being detected in 500,000 barrels of gin. And, and he says, now that's one dry martini. I mean, that's, that's, how, uh, that's how, and this is on average, that's how well these fish can pick up scents. And obviously there's certain species like sharks and stuff that are really attuned to, to blood. But in general, that's how great and how amazing these fish are gifted with, uh, with scent. So let's get into the negative. So we're gonna go negative and then neutral and then we'll do the positive. Um, so that very first one is the human skin oil. And man, that was a big aha for me. And, and what he talks about, this is gonna impact you even when, you know, obviously when you're tying knots, but even in when, when you're spooling up your, your line or, or you know, tying 
line to leader knots. I mean, all this stuff, you're putting your oils on this line. And he said time and time again, if there was any, in, any even amount of human oils on there, it was detracting the fish. And in some cases, maybe this has happened to you. He said what he found many times it would take anywhere from six to even 15 casts to get it off. And, and maybe that's happened where you had, it, you just think, oh, the fish aren't biting it. And all of a sudden you start getting strikes in an area that you haven't moved. He said, sometimes depending on how much of your own human oil you have on your line, that it's taking that many casts uh, before all the scent is gone. And now you're basically back to neutral. I mean, isn't that nuts? Uh, I thought yeah. that was, I thought that was so fat. And that was part of one of Mark Sosin's books uh, too, where he did a lot of studies on that. And uh, I was like, man, that is so crazy. And like, why, how come, how come grandpa didn't tell us about that? You know? <laughs> yeah. And so, and what's also interesting too, and we're going to have a list of all this. If you're on, if you're on our website now, uh, just scroll down below and you'll see the, the full list. If you're not on our website, we'll put a link down below in the description that'll go, that'll show all of this. But what, um, what I thought was really uh, interesting as well is that it's not just about a physical touch. So it's not just about us actually physically touching the line. Um, airborne chemicals are a big deal as well. And so if you're storing your, your gear in a garage next to a gas tank for like a lawnmower, which I know a lot of people do, huge mistake because that, that, uh, that, those chemicals, they're airborne and they're gonna, they're gonna basically permeate the, the line. And that's gonna be, again, that's just as bad as, as having, uh, just rubbing, you know. That Dude, you, you skipped ahead. We were still on Listerine. You're already, you're already telling them what the next one is. No, I just, I just want to, you know, some people have, don't have time. I just want to just, just hit it harder with the facts. So obviously we're going to say some cool oh, stuff. Oh no, they there. have time. They're going to stick around to the end because the end's the best <laughs> part. They have the positive. So the next one that Luke already jumped ahead to, actually we'll, we'll go there next, is nicotine. We talked about that. And to Luke's point, it, it doesn't mean that you have to be smoking and, and, and then going right to the line and tying a knot. Even if you happen to be smoking in your little, you know, your tackle room, or if you have a garage where you keep all of your lines and your leaders and all of your loos, if you're sitting there and that's your little place you take smoke breaks, all that stuff is permeating inside of this line can actually have a negative impact forever in some cases, depending on how much is seeped into that. I thought that was just like, holy smokes. And he said, you'll watch, even on some of these charter boats and stuff, usually the guys who are smoking, if they know about this stuff and they've maybe learned the hard weather, they're not as bad, but the guys who are sitting there chain smoking and constantly using their fingers to tie, they're usually going to be catching fewer fish than the same person next to them who was, who was not smoking. All things else created uh, equal, which I thought was really, really fascinating. And then yeah, the next just one. A, a, that's just another reason to not smoke. That's, oh, yeah, another reason not yeah, to sure, smoke. Share this with your kids. In case you didn't eat enough. Yeah, kids, you want to catch more fish? Don't smoke. Come on now. Uh, the other one is petroleum and all derivatives, including gas and motor oil. And that was another one. I, I, I just think back to, um, you know, growing up in, in the garage and, you know, dad kept all the, the gasoline cans. And for a while, we kept rods and reels. And even on our place in Placida, I believe there's a gas can down there. Uh, I, I don't know uh, that it, it, it is open like some of the old school ones but still if any of it's seeping out his point was that gasoline let's just say you have a five gallon uh, tank of just you know gasoline for your boat or lawnmower whatever it is if that's sitting there being stored in the same places that your rods and reels or even just your spools of line are that gas is actually soaking into the lines i mean that was like holy smokes i mean all these reasons that we might have been making excuses why the fish weren't biting so much of it is going to come down to scent, knowing that they smell a thousand times better than, uh, than dogs do. I, that yeah, was and, like and one of those holy smoke moments. Yeah, and also too, a lot of people, so I get the question a lot is, uh, I can't remember the name of it. There's some sprays for the line, right? You spray it on your line and it helps, uh, you know, slickens your line so you can cast further or whatever the claims are or you know, protects from UV. Any chemical on your line is most likely a bad idea. So I would recommend, I'd never like those things. And, and after reading this, now I really don't like them. So I would, I definitely would not recommend putting any sort of spray in your line. Try to keep it as bare and clean as possible. Especially if it has any kind of petroleum derivative. I mean, it's yeah. very clear that any kind of petroleum and derivative is a negative. It will actually detract 
fish from striking your lure, even if it's inside somehow morphed into the line from, you know, weeks or months or years of just the scent uh, permeating that, you know, that, that mono or floral line. I mean, that's the easiest way for something to get in there. But same with braid, right? I mean, it's essentially kind of like little fabric. I mean, all that stuff can uh, get in there. It's really, really fascinating. The next one, dude, this, this was a big aha moment for me. Sunscreens and bug repellents. Well, I've known this one. This so, has been common. So many times where I've, I've gone out like uh, a placida, uh, you know, hitting that little, that little bridge there. And I'll go out and actually be catching fish. And, and it should be that the bite was getting better. I mean, it had a better tide. It was getting darker. And I run back into the garage and put some sunscreen on. Next thing you know, I'm tying, tying knots again. And I'm not getting a single bite. And that hit me so hard. I was like, holy smokes, sunscreen, sun lotions, and bug repellents. Once again, that are all loaded with chemicals. Now, there are some bug sprays, maybe. I know there's some sunscreens that don't have the chemicals, but still, wash your hands. That stuff is definitely hurting the amount of strikes you get. Yeah, and that really goes down to, I think it shows some scientific proof to our, uh, our findings at our, our uh, little island parties back in the day, Joe, where we'd kind of go on those islands and, and uh, some you know, wouldn't shower for multiple days at a time, some of us the whole week. Yep. And the uh, one who, who basically smelt the worst caught the most fish. And I think it was because we just didn't have, you know, we didn't have all that, all like the lotion stuff, like in our skin, like I'm sure shampoo, like all of it probably makes a difference. But, uh, but yeah, again, just keep it as, as chemical free as possible yourself and, and your lure in your line. Yep. And the Very next important. one is, is on that is chemical plasticizers added to soften plastics. So any kind of chemical plasticizer i'm not even sure what that means but it, it sounds like it's going to detract fish any chemical plasticizer added to soften plastics and the last one luke touched on it was any type of perfumed soaps and that goes for a lot of the soaps like irish springs and stuff and that's a perfumed soap any type of soap that has any kind of scent in it or any type of perfume in it is something that's not natural so that means all you manly dudes out there who are putting the irish spring on I mean, that, even on your hands, that can actually detract fish if it has an unnatural scent, especially if it's a chemical-based scent. Uh, once again, super guilty. I love Irish Spring. It's great. Uh, maybe, I don't know, Dove is Dove. Is that more chemical and scent-free? Well, they have a bunch of them. So what it says, uh, we'll get to a scent, but basically what you want to find is, is non-perfume soap, and I'm sure they would probably have it. I know, I think some Dove have that, I have to imagine, and then um, biodegradable detergents. So um, if you really want to get hardcore, it's basically biodegradable everything and nothing perfumed, nothing scented. All right, Luke is really guilty of jumping ahead. This might be the last time you join me on this podcast. <laughs> so now we are forced to go over to negative or from to neutral from negative and we'll just start at the bottom now and work our way up because the last neutral one is one of those thank goodness i kind of wish it was on the other side on the positive but at least it's neutral and you'll know what i'm talking about when i say it so we're going to start at the bottom here so the neutral one is that non-perfume soap and biogradual detergents up from that is soda pop and fruit drinks that means even in your system if you happen to you know uh, your kid pops a, a hole in some kind of Capri Sun or something and it squirts out, it's not going to be a game changer. They found over and over again and that was a neutral scent or a neutral underwater smell track. Uh, chlorinated water and treated septic water. Um, I don't know why you'd have treated septic water on your boat or anything, but anyhow, that's yeah, great. Maybe, that's, maybe that's a boat water. spray down, like maybe people would put that for like a, a freshwater spray down the boat. So yeah, just normal fresh water doesn't seem to make a difference, which is interesting that the chlorinated one um, didn't, but. Yeah. Uh, the other neutral one, human urine. So you're now allowed to pee all over your rods, reels, line, lure, and not going to affect your chances of catching fish at all. So if you ever had that really drunk buddy who couldn't help but just pee all over your stuff, uh, you know what? He's not that bad of a guy. Uh, For next one. reasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coming up soon. Coming up yeah, soon. Uh, natural vegetation, grass and leaves. So rubbing your hands in grass and leaves and tying knots, not going to really do too much. Uh, that changes my entire pre-trip plan now. 
uh, what is this oil? Uh, I'm going to look like an idiot trying to say it. An, a nice? A nice? Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but either way, it's neutral. So it Please, doesn't Please, don't A-N-I-S-C. A nice, like Denise oil? Anise oil. Looks like anise oil. Don't know what anise oil even is. The last one is a neutral. Thank goodness. Alcoholic beverages. So you can still have your bluegills. You can still have your bush lights your bush lattes and the bluegills all day long. You can even spill them on your rods and reels in line, and it's going to be a neutral underwater smell track. And your drunk friend can even pee on the line, and that's get, won't, won't be a problem. No, that's right. no harm done. No it's harm, no foul. It's a double neutral. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how that works. If you, dr you beer on it, and then your friend pees, who's also got a lot of beer in the urine. Double neutral. That's still neutral. I it think it might turn into positive. It could well, actually go on the positive side. I, 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 I don't. I doubt it. No, but, everyone. Uh, but yeah, that, that was two, that was two interesting. Neutrals equal positive. Yeah, that was interesting. I would have thought that the alcohol and the chlorinated water would have been bad, but um, yeah. So it's interesting to see that there was no uh, no no difference. So time for positives, huh? Let's go to the positives. So once again. These are the underwater smell tracks, AKA scents, that they found to be positive, where fish in, in all the tests they did underwater would actually be attracted to this. Now, this doesn't mean that you can just put whatever we're about to say on your rod or reel and you're guaranteed to catch fish, but we're always, as fishermen, always trying to get that edge, right? We're always trying to have just even that slight advantage and what they found is all of these things we're about to list here in the positive give you a, at least a distinct, if not a great advantage over the fish. So number one, and, and this one makes sense because it's in a lot of, of, these, um, of these scents that are out there. Uh, and I'm talking about you know, the, the pro cures and, and the, you know, the, the gulp juice and all this stuff is fish extracts, including herring oil. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of lures that are using different versions of fish extracts, including our very own Slam Shady, you know, 2.0, and also the Alabama Leprechaun. I mean, it actually is infused with real pieces of, of shrimp and, uh, and bait fish for a reason. Uh, I mean, we, we read this book and, and it makes sense that, you know, just like chumming, right? We know that when you chum the water with that same kind of stuff, a bunch of herring oil, herring oil and fish extracts, the fish come up to the boat. So that one's kind of an obvious one. And so is the next one which ties in that with this bait fish guts, right? Luke, I mean, it, 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 any saltwater angler uh, knows that. Freshwater, you're probably not chumming as much with bait fish guts, uh, but in saltwater, you can go out anywhere and just see how quickly you attract all types of fish when you put extracts and in, uh, in guts out there. Yeah, like when we did that, that Spanish mackerel lesson on just how to go out and just easily catch Spanish mackerel and basically you know, anchor down up current, to some structure that's that's and then put a chum block out and the chum block is basically a bunch of small bait fish just chopped up so it has everything it has the the slime it has the guts that it mentions it has the you know extracts just everything it's it's literally just chopped up fish and in no time at all the fish start coming uh, especially the roamers like mackerel that are always out there moving and they're they're going to be the ones that'll um, that'll come across the trail uh, first and it's shocking, and it really is shocking how many different species um, will end up honing in on, on scent like that. That's like, that's like, in my opinion, that's the best scent where it's natural stuff, it's just constantly flowing out and those fish will eventually come across it and start, start looking for the source. Yep, um, you gave away another one in your just little comment there. So this was one that I thought was interesting and there's a story on this and it's, it's fish slime. And, and on a prior podcast, I had given a hint of this. And the, the story behind the fish slime is there's a lot of time where it kind of feels like the rich get richer, meaning the guy or gal in the boat who catches that first fish usually has a tendency to kind of stay hot or have that hot hand and catch more. What said fish slime over and over again uh, was, uh, uh, was a positive. And in many cases, you know, when you do catch a fish and still have some of that slime on that same line, leader, lure, that your chances are now increased, you know, uh, over the guy or gal next to you using the exact same thing, 
to catch uh, to catch more fish. I thought that was really cool. And and I've done that a few times. You get a little bit of slime on your hand, start you know rubbing up the leader line a little bit, put some of that slime on there. Yeah, I do it all the time. Catch a fish, right? Little little uh, swipe with the lure on the on the side of it before releasing. Um, it, it's it's uh, something I've just always done for a while, and and I just had a hunch that it worked. Or at least I, it felt like it was good luck, and I, I think it you know it was a little bit of science to it, but. Um, before we go to the next one, the fish slime isn't always a positive. There was an interesting case in here. It was with um, with musky fishermen. So uh, supposedly, musky can't stand the smell of northern pike. Maybe I have it backwards. I'm pretty sure that was the case. But um, is that the case, right, Joe? Musky didn't like northern pike. Or was Let's it see person? here. Fish slime can be a negative if the slime originates from a species offensive to the game fish being sought. Example: the slime of a northern pike is negative to many species, including yeah. like the musky. Yeah. So my memory was right. And so what what the locals do that are that are hardcore is that as soon as they catch a fit a fish or yeah a, a northern pike on a lure, they cut the lure off and put it aside. And they don't, and they tie on a fresh one because they know that the odds of catching a muskie, which are hard to catch altogether, um, is generally you catch like one or two muskie a day. It's a good day. And so as soon as a northern pike scent is on the lure, scratched, it's, it's out. It's out. And they have a different box for the, with, with the pike, the pike scent ones. And then they go home and clean it at the end of the day and let it dry. And now it goes back to the good, the good pile. So paying attention to that, to this, you know, this scent is really, really important. And just to highlight the fact that not all fish-based scents are good. Even that shark scent, I remember we were down in the Everglades uh, with Marcos, one of, our, one of our insider members, and there's some shark repellent. I guess it was on, he was on a podcast about it. Uh, but it's basically natural, it's decayed shark um, matter, and that totally detracts sharks. And apparently doesn't have a imp uh, impact one way or the other on the other fish. But um, yeah, just, just again, something to be mindful of, that the, the smell of other fish is very, very important, knowing yes. that fish can smell way better than dogs can smell. Yes. And so next one, natural bait, uh, which includes juices from worms, frogs, crawdads, leeches, and maggots. And he had a cool story in, uh, in, in, the, in the book where he was out on a charter boat and he wasn't catching anything, but he started watching the guys who were, you know, who everyone else was calling lucky, right? Who had the hot hand or they were in the, in the right spot on the boat. And these lucky fishermen were all chopping up bait fish, just like you would if you were, you know, starting to chum or just chopping up a bunch of small pieces of squid and stuff. And they were actually washing like their hands in it, like literally grabbing it and putting it all over their hands before they handled anything, including tie knots, et cetera. So he says he went for two hours and he had not produced a single hookup. So matters couldn't get any worse. So after he started massaging a bunch of mashed up anchovies, because those other guys were doing it, I rubbed down my line with it for the first 10 feet. Then I baited up and flipped my line off the stern and then a jungle of other different colored ones and all these other people. He said, 20 minutes later, I boated my first yellowtail and continued to catch fish all morning long until my muscles screamed, stop. And he has reenacted this test on many different waters it, with the exact same type of success as getting anchovies, bait fish guts, and actually mashing it up, like washing his hands in it. So now you're getting rid of that L-serine, uh, L-serine, whatever you want to call it, all those uh, bad oils from your hands. And now you're just basically coating them with a very positive smell track. And now you're handling everything that you normally, I normally would. I thought that was, uh, that was so cool. Yeah. And, and that's uh, another thing that I, that I learned and I've started doing and I haven't tested, I haven't done, you know, a, a defined test on, on one versus the other. But what, what I've never done before reading this book is I never would, would apply scent to anything other than the lure. And, and now knowing, right, just, just actually that one story was, was pretty good, pretty cool, where he's not, only, he's not only putting some scent on the actual lure or bait itself, but he's actually going 10 feet up the line. I think at a minimum, we just need to be mindful of exactly where we touch most often. So other than lure, what do we always touch, right? Our, our line to lead or not. So that is going to be full of the bad scent, of human scent, right, where we connect our braid to our leader. 
And so at a minimum, I would recommend everybody at least get some sort of scent and, and at least cover that section. Or, or we're going to say the, one of the best for last. I thought you were about to say it. I was about to, I was about to throw the computer at you. <laughs> uh, so we'll go, we'll go next. So this one, this one surprised me. And I, I, he didn't have any really awesome stories on it, but a positive smell track was milk and, and certain dairy products such as cheese. Uh, that seems wild that you could be rubbing some Colby Jack cheese. I can't imagine jalapeno Jack is going to do as well, but it's wild that that milk would, would actually be a positive uh, smell, underwater smell track. Yeah, I, I have the same thing. It really surprised me. That was, that was the most surprising of all of them. Well, to try that's that the one. one that has nothing to do with really the, you know, marine life and forming a positive was it really interesting well the last one that had anything to do with marine life yeah no i i, I didn't want to i was about to correct myself but i didn't want to ruin another surprise Jeez, louise <laughs> so luke luke mentioned it and uh in in terms of you know you're you're not and and this i mean if you watch any professional fisherman you might see them doing this and what i mean is they'll right before they're about to cinch some type of knot down whether it be direct to their their lure or their hook or even their line to, to leader, you know, a lot of times they will wet it with saliva. We have tons of videos out there uh, that say, hey, let me take a second and wet this down before I, I really pull the knot snug. And, and that was a very, very positive underwater smell track is human saliva. So if you do have a knot that you've been touching, it, it actually is incredibly positive to have human saliva. And they did do quite a few tests on this and uh, really fascinating that fish were actually attracted uh, to, to human saliva and were more likely to strike a lure that had human saliva on it. I thought that was really fascinating. Well, you said very, very positive. I don't remember seeing that it was more positive than the other positives or did I miss something? Like it was just a positive. Uh, it wasn't. Yeah, no, they're all very, very positive. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So just to be clear, the the uh, he's not saying that this because you didn't say anything else was very, very positive. Human saliva isn't more positive than the other stuff. It was just listed in the positive category. But oh, I don't. Don't be a Debbie Downer, man. Come on. It's very. It's, we have we have we have so much of it. That's very, very positive. All right. Yeah, I'm just saying. I I think if if we say that if you, if we say that overemphasize the uh, the positivity, people are going to be just spitting all over all their gear, and and that's not good either. Especially no, if you're no, a smoker. they sh they should. That's the whole point of this podcast. Yeah. You got to spit on everything. <laughs> so drink some milk, eat some cheese, and start spitting all over your uh, your stuff. And there's three. No, right and there. don't worry if you drink so much milk that you pee all over your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there's no nicotine, right? Still don't smoke because even having that will probably mess up the saliva. But uh, how crazy. Yeah, that was all good yeah no so how crazy is that though that uh that human saliva was a fish attracted yeah and and uh and on that knot thing too i'll be uh, i've heard different um different theories on uh whether the saliva is is good for cinching down a knot and i'll be doing a test on it i'm not sold uh, i think back in the day it was important to put saliva to not burn the knots um, but supposedly with the lines that are made a lot better now, um, saliva can actually hurt the, the actual constriction of knots. So I'll be doing a test on that real soon. We've got a, a legit line tester that just came in and that'll be one of my first tests with it. Yep. So really cool backstory after doing some research on this dude and he even has it right here in the actual acknowledgement. So he thanked his wife and his children and then guess who next? Berkeley and Company. So Berkeley, th this was published back in the early 80s. Berkeley went and hired this guy, Paul Johnson, to do a lot of their scents. Is it funny how like Berkeley Gulp and a lot of the Berkeley Power Baits with all the scents started coming out, uh, I believe a lot of this right after this in the 80s. Uh, we're about to do some, some dates on when a lot of these things were launched. But they, they took a lot of his findings and I mean, Berkeley is a massive, massive company, not because of just this book, but uh, they clearly have used a lot of the findings in here. And I have to imagine if we knew what the exact formula was for that gulp juice that continues to keep working really, really well, that it's probably a lot of these positive uh, 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 fish tracks 
uh, these underwater, I mean, smell tracks. It could have been a little bit of everything. Yeah, maybe there's some cheese in there and some milk and people Seriously. spitting in it. I mean, not uh, crazy that, dude. But then, then it was interesting. He says, it's my own suspicion that many of the so called fish attractants being marketed today by manu lure manufacturers do so in reality, oh no, do in reality function as chemical masks to disguise the L Seren and other betraying negative smell tracks that exist on and within line lures and terminal tackle. Um, I thought that was really, uh, really interesting. And he talks about some of the things that some of these manufacturers have tried from different oils and raspberry perfumes, et cetera. Um, and, but yeah, I want to do some, I want to do some research on that on when, when, when like Gulp was officially launched. Uh, that'd be really interesting. Yeah, and, and so this, just to have in perspective, like this wasn't just some dude who was just did a couple tests like in his backyard. I mean, this was like legit long-term tests with, where he would, he would go underwater and like that one instance where he had the, the two different people casting that bass, like he would go underwater, find a, a spot with a bunch of bass on it. And he would then like say, he would make them position the right way and then have them start casting. So he would go down there and, and really just, just actually watch the fish react to the lures and did it over a long period of time. So I, this is at least the most um, conclusive and uh, the, the most established study of this in this capacity that I've seen anywhere. Yeah, which is um, once again why, why Berkeley hired him and uh, yep. used his, uh, his intel for many, many years and probably still continues to. It's a, it's a shame that it didn't happen today, you know, you know, with today's equipment. I mean, now you can do a GoPro and, 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 and show all that. But I mean, this took him like decades to do this. It didn't just happen like in a month. Uh, the bad news is all he had was probably a really expensive, this is like 1980, uh, underwater, you know, camera uh, that probably had like a crazy thick casing on it and stuff. Unfortunately, there was no, um, no real underwater video camera equipment at the uh, at the time and if it was it was something that only like a nat geo could afford but i thought this was just a, a fascinating book and that was one of the most fascinating things and, and as i continue to keep asking people that, that had no idea i've never even heard of any of this stuff i was like all right we've got to do a podcast on this and i'm gonna have old mark sosan on soon who uh, ironically wrote the forward of this uh, this book but I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. I thought I thought that was not just cool, but it's something that you can apply. It's not like talking about some crazy history lesson in fishing. I mean, this is something that applies uh, today, uh, minus maybe the the milk part. I still a little bit. I don't know about that milk and cheese, but uh, everything else, man. Um, and I think Luke's point earlier is the the positive stuff probably gets us a little bit more excited but it's the negative stuff that we should be avoiding that's going to be the, the biggest game changer. And that certainly don't be smoking, but all those small things, just even storing. I mean, he, he made a really, really big point to say, do not ever store anything, your line leader, tackle, rods, reels, anything around anything with petroleum, gas, chemicals, et cetera. Like just keep it so far away. He's like, it will actually hurt the amount of fish that you catch, which I thought was, uh, was really, really fascinating. Yeah, again, great intel. And, and yeah. even that, you know, the, obviously you don't have to have the positive sense, but yeah, I think getting away from the bad ones is the most important thing of all. Yeah, um, and if you can't afford the positive ones, you can always afford saliva. So just keep spitting on your stuff. Yeah, but I'll, I'll be doing some more scent tests. So we've done, I've done some scent tests on, um, on Cashel's and I've done a couple with Procure. And so I'll be applying some of this, um, this information where before I was just sending the lure itself. And so I'm going to be sending up to like the, you know, the first 10 feet of line and, and do some actual tests, you know, three cast one, three cast, you know, three cast sent, three cast no sent and, and do it for multiple trips just to see if it makes an impact. And if so, how much? So I, I'm, I'm going to be very interested to try to quantify those, uh, those positives. And if anyone is interested in uh, us coming out with some kind of salt strong, soap uh like a smell track positive smell track soap made out of cheese and and uh i don't know maybe we would throw some alcohol in there since that's neutral uh but you know made up of all the positive smell tracks and a bunch of stinky bait fish i don't know that my wife would appreciate it as uh, as much but something you can keep on the on the boat um maybe just keep even keep a little bar in the truck and 
use it use it in the water um uh, i don't know this that might that would, work i don't know that that would sell though how many people want uh, uh basically a bar of soap made out of anchovies and cut up bait fish and stuff i mean it's a lot easier doing that than having to chop up bait fish and and wash your hands in it like those guys on the on the party boat are doing so could be onto something there joe this might work it's like kramer in seinfeld the the his beach <laughs> <laughs> it smells just like the beach. That's the, that's the best show ever. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Please, please, please give us a review on iTunes if if you are in the whole iTunes ecosystem. We are so close to a thousand um, uh, not subscribers reviews, and that's a big deal for us. It really is a big deal for our own egos. It makes us feel better about ourselves. And quite honestly, it helps us out big time with Apple. Like it's kind of like hitting that 100,000 uh, and YouTube for subscribers. It's not easy to get 1,000. Uh, in fact, most podcasts never even get there. So if you can, leave us a five-star review on iTunes. That would mean the world. We're trying to break 1,000. And then, of course, if you're watching this in the YouTube, subscribe there. And if you haven't joined us in the Insider Club, we do a whole lot more in depth. This is the free stuff. You like the free stuff? We're giving it away. Wait till you see the stuff in the Insider Club. I believe we're now over a thousand videos in the Insider Club. A thousand videos, and that's the private stuff. So you know, YouTube is where we have the public. All of the private stuff is held in a whole separate account that obviously only our members can see. And now we're up to fourteen thousand members. Have all kinds of amazing little mini courses. Twenty percent off all your tackle. And of course, you get really cool stuff like this that we will do a, a lot of deep diving uh, into this. And uh, we love just testing stuff and sharing it with our insider members. So hope you enjoyed this. This was too good not to share with the, uh, the public. And uh, check out this book too, The Scientific Angler. We'll put a, a link to it. It's out of publication, uh, but there's still you know some copies out there on the, on the Amazon. So uh, yeah, if you got Luke? Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're new to us, yeah, just be sure to go to saltron.com just to see see what we're all about. As Joe said, the, the Insider Club is is by far our, our the most popular offering, and it's 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 a fishing club, and we have two big bold guarantees. Number one is that what you're going to catch, we guarantee you're going to catch more fish than you ever have before, and that's a 365 guarantee, day guarantee because that's the longest we can do with our merchant and lettuce. We know it's going to work, and we know you're going to love it. If you like catching redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder, it's going to be awesome. You're going to absolutely love it, and we help you save money on all your tackle from our tackle. 20% off of everything you need. And again, both those are the guarantee across the entire year. So you're gonna yeah, love it, saltstrong.com. And we will help you avoid negative smell tracks. So guys, thank you so much for all the love, all the support. Join us in the club. Make sure to leave us a review on iTunes. Help us break that a thousand mark so we can finally get that monkey off of our back. And otherwise we will see you on the next episode. We out, peace.